hi. Um, so I'm Maria, and I'm one of uh, originally 18 founders of Assemble. And we started in our free time whilst um, kind of having really boring jobs after graduation. It's kind of drawing CAD, uh, drawings of toilets, all that stuff that you do. Um, and I guess we wanted to um, do something fun, do something with our hands, do something quickly um, that is, you know, we're in control of. Because as a student, you get a kind of holistic approach to design where you get to think of a concept and kind of draw in detail, make some models, you know, all those things in architecture school or as an artist or as a writer, you know, you get the freedom and then you get a job and then you don't have an idea why you're doing what you're doing. So, um, so this is us um, and this is our port portrait of kind of modelled on the Amish barn raising image, um, which I guess is a bit romantic, but the idea is that it's kind of, you know, the collective um, building together and also the relationships we have with each other are just as important as we have with our clients or collaborators. And this idea of a non-hierarchical structure is really important because we feel like kind of having lots of different voices produces really rich work. Um, and so our first project, I'm just going to tell you the story of how, you know, quick summary. Um, so this is our first project, which is a um, cinema in a petrol station, the Cinerolium. And it was, um, you know, this is really exciting. We got into the newspaper for, for doing this thing. Uh, but the idea was to basically just do a quick summer thing in our free time where we um, kind of create the, recreate the grandeur of the, go you know, cinema going that you had back in the uh, kind of um, last century. Um, and the kind of uh, sim symbolism of that, the, the curtain and the signage and all the detailing and of the cinema palace. And it was very much a project for us, just to do something for us, have fun, sell tickets, sell popcorn. Um, and we got our friends to help us build certain elements and learn different techniques. Um, you know, we laser cut the signs, we um, molded those kind of, you know, those ugly plastic um, panels you get on 70s office buildings. So we kind of got those and we remolded them into different shapes. Um, um, so, you know, transforming this um, uh, empty petrol station and petrol shop into a kind of temporary thing. You know, and you can brand it as pop-up, whatever, but it was just for us and it was um, something we could try to do um, with very small means um, and got loads of funding, kind of um, sponsorships and loads of help from people. And it was very much about trying things with our hands and learning how to make things and, you know, uh, playing around with the curtain to see if it works, folding it, kind of getting our friends who work in theatre to come and help um, kind of rig um, the curtain. Just, you know, doing the things that you don't really get to do that much at architecture school where you're um, kind of drawing quite a distance. Um, and so we ended up sewing this, loads of this curtain and using three domestic sewing machines, which all broke. Um, but, you know, it was, it was fun. And we were all kind of volunteers at the time, so it was just a hobby project. And so this is the interior of the cinema. So, you know, kind of making the most of this industrial material. So that, that fabric is actually um, industrial roofing insulation. And so on the one side, it's shiny. On the other side, it's quite matte and velvet. And so it's, it creates quite an interesting environment. Uh, and we borrowed some velvet chairs from the Cinema Museum, who we became very friendly with. They were really great. Uh, so they, you know, they told us lots about different the history of the films. And um, we also built chairs outside, um, these kind of copies of flip-down seats you get in cinemas. And it was, you know, it was really, I guess we felt like it was a success when we sold all the tickets and we sold all the popcorn. And it was really exciting. It was like, wow, we made something and people turned up to, to come and see it. Um, so that was really great and very... Yeah, it's just an amazing experience having learnt new skills on site and kind of have it out there. And we also thought about everything, not just the popcorn and the kind of what we were wearing and the sort of films we were showing, but also the, the whole experience of watching the film. So um, we would be showing these kind of American road movies because um, we're kind of on the road in Clarkenwell Road and we didn't have much sound insulation. So if a bus came past, it didn't really matter. Um, <laughs> so, um, but you know, we were in the cinema and, and then at the end of the film, uh, 12 of us would go around the curtain um, and when the film finishes, we would pull it up and so you'd be out back in the kind of urban, urban environment. So it was a little trick and it was, you know, it was great. It was just a bit of theater um, and we really enjoyed it. So this is the Cinerolium. Cinema and petroleum, that's the pun. Um, and so after, I guess since then, that was five years ago, and we've been um, working very different types of projects from kind of furniture to theatre, kind of, well, social affordable housing, art gallery. Um, and I think 
the reason we were able to, to do so much um, is because of where we were. So we managed to persuade um, the London Legacy Development Corporation, London Legacy, um, who are kind of developing the fringe around the Olympic Park. So this is the Olympic Park there, Stratford, Bow, um, and we are kind of here on this um, island near Sugar, Three Mills Studio, Sugar House Lane. Um, and it's, you know, it's a kind of typical London area which is undergoing lots of change We're from industrial to residential, quite drastic, quick, um, you know, sometimes a bit too quick where a lot of industries and um, kind of product, areas of production have been moved out. Um, and so the idea was that we would take this shed and for a couple of years, while it's kind of also awaiting residential development, turn it into something kind of good for the public and also good for us um, because it was uh, when we found it derelict for a few years. So you can see um, there used to be a sign makers there who made signs for weather spoons, but then I think they went out of business when all the signs became digitized. Um, so, but then, yeah, so this is us when we've moved in and we hosted lots of workshops and events and gradually developed our practice in that space. And originally the setup was that the front of house was a public bit where we had kind of, we moved our cinema from the first project here, uh, ran a pizzeria um, and some other events. Uh, at the back we had our studio and workshop. And we ran, you know, for about, for about a year as a, kind of design studio versus pizzeria. And it was quite, it was quite difficult. We designed the pizza ourselves. Um, it was really good. But um, the thing is, we were kind of in the middle of nowhere. And um, you know, it wasn't Dalston. So it was kind of like people would turn up for events, but then uh, every day was quite empty. Um, we would have kind of local music students um, come, which was really nice, but we were losing money. So that wasn't very nice. But you know, it was great because... Um, that allowed us to grow, and it's still growing and changing. So now the kind of latest arrangement, we've decided to really focus on workspace because because this area is full of artists and craftspeople and you know um, kind of manufacturers who are being moved. And this is an opportunity to provide some affordable space for some of those people for a short amount of time. So at the moment, this is how it is. So this is our office there. This is the kind of assembly space where we put together big work. Uh, at the back, we've got a workshop, and we rented out some of the space to carpenters, actual carpenters who can make things really well. Um, and then we built a new building called Yard House, which is in the yard, industrial yard. And this is where lots of various types of practitioners work. And again, it's affordable workspace for people who make things which are messy and loud. Um, so this is our office. Um, originally, actually, we built it as a, as a bunker for our club event space because it was sound insulated, but then... Um, now, now it's our office, <laughs> and this is our um, kind of storage unit which we built with all our shared tools. And then the front of house is used by all the different uh, practitioners, carpenters, um, c uh, you know, fashion makers, um, product designers, whatever. And we show each other our work and learn from each other, which is quite cool. This is the workshop, um, people putting stuff together, and we we made you know we make, we fabricate lots of different things. And then we have the yard, which is really great, because we can make even bigger, even messier things there. Um, and so over the years, we've kind of learned lots of new techniques and skills and you know, processes, which allow us to make very different type of work to what you usually see, and I guess in a uh, you know, firm which only has computers. Um, and we have lots of tedious bureaucratic meetings, because obviously there's a lot of us, and there's um, non-hierarchical structure, so it means lots of conversation. But we have, um, I think the most important way of keeping it together is the lunch rotor. So we make lunch every day for everyone, because we're in the middle of nowhere, and there's nowhere to buy nice food. So we start cooking for each other, and if you're late on Monday morning, you get a point, and that means you have to cook more. Um, so that's, that's kind of the way, <laughs> the way forward for us. And so, but uh, this year we have to leave the space because it's, it's going to be developed into housing. Um, and so we're kind of thinking what to do. So we're thinking of trying to find somewhere and set up an even bigger collaborative affordable workspace which has lots of people, you know, talking and influencing each other and creating amazing work. So this is our dream image. I don't know where it's going to be, but if you have an, any, a place in mind, let me know. Um, so, and I guess, yeah, the thing that got us lots of attention recently is our work in Liverpool. Um, this is, has been happening alongside everything else in the last few years. Um, so this is the Br Granby Four Streets. And Granby is a kind of amazing part of Liverpool, which has been always very diverse um, and also 
you know, quite deprived. And has also been uh, really neglected by the government and has suffered from a lot of kind of bad top-down planning decisions. And um, since the kind of riots in the 1981, um, there, was, there was further, um, yeah, there was further kind of emptying of the homes and employment. And I think also the way that the area was portrayed was very negative. Um, even though there were still people there and still streets, you know, inhabited by shops and uh, children running around. And so this is a map which shows kind of some of the uh, empty buildings. And there's a lot of them, you know, streets left empty for 20, 30 years because, um, well, of various schemes, but the kind of the latest one, Pathfind in 2002, where um, the kind of government decided to buy up the houses in order to sell them, to demolish them, I mean, sorry, to demolish them and to build new, less dense housing, which would kind of spruce up the market um, somehow. But in the end, um, you know, there was not enough money and the houses ended up being empty and, um, you know, things didn't go to plan. Even then there were people trying to persuade the government to kind of make it work, you know, really active residents who were still there, come, you know, putting, together, pu putting forward fl plans for, you know, renovating the houses. Um, so this is kind of now real realization of the mistakes. Um, you know, you can see um, rubbish not being collected from streets, you know, really neglected um, areas. But, you know, there were obviously people who tried to make it work, and there were some people, residents who stayed, um, and they formed various organizations over the years to try and kind of come up with plans for the area. And they started literally going out to the street and gardening and planting, um, you know, just there were their own hands physically just making it what they wanted to be because there was no one else coming. Um, and, you know, having a market and all those things. And then quite recently they set up a community land trust which, um, in order to develop kind of co-shared um, affordable housing for themselves. And so we've started working with them at this stage, you know, obviously after all the hard work has been done. Um, <laughs> we came in and did some nice drawings, but we also, you know, we did some research <laughs> uh, and looked at different options of how you could make the most of what's there already and kind of the houses that are the least, not as badly neglected, they could still become housing. And then think, you know, uh, houses which are really ruinous, they could become kind of shared facilities. So, you know, spending as little money as, as, you, as possible to get the best outcomes. Um, and so this is a, the winter garden proposal for one of those spaces which we're developing now, working on now. Um, and so this idea of kind of, with small means, bringing the value back into the homes which was stripped from the homes. You know, a lot of the kind of beautiful mantelpieces that were there were taken out and lots of, you know, nice detailed handles and how to bring that love back, um, which is something we've been working on and kind of developing these, you know, storage cabinets and kind of special furniture and uh, these fireplaces again and some details for the bathroom, you know, very simple things. Um, uh, this is called, this is from the Granby Rock Collection. Uh, so this is using some of the rubble from the demolition sites to make the mantelpieces. These are some bespoke um, handles for the cabinets. Um, and so we set up a kind of temporary workshop in one of the empty houses, mixing concrete and making these mantelpieces, uh, drying them in, in these ruinous houses. And this is one in one of the houses that we've developed, actually. And so then the Turner Prize nomination has allowed all this work to really kind of get a new platform and to set up the workshop that will produce all those things kind of as a, as a real enterprise, as a real social enterprise, uh, Granby workshop. And the kind of idea of how do you capitalize on something like the Turner Prize literally by kind of selling, uh, advertising the products that we make for the area um, there. And so this is the, the kind of show home that we did uh, at the exhibition in Tramway in Glasgow, uh, which is you know, showing all the stuff that was made together with the residents um, and which is kind of feeding back into the area by bringing money, jobs, skills, all those things that, the, you know, tick, tick, tick. Um, and this is, yeah, some of the kind of, some more information on the products. Um, you know, this is kind of very, I guess, the, the, I guess the, the interesting thing about this is that it's very, oh no, I pressed the wrong button. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, thanks. Great. No, it's only three. <laughs> this, this is very... Um, very low tech, and it's very much about the hand that makes the work, um, and it's very accessible and easy. You know, this is barbecuing uh, clay to make those things. 
And this is literally taking a bit of wood, putting in ink, and then stamping the wood on the fabric. So, you know, it sounds a bit um, amateur, because it is. <laughs> um, and I guess this is it, really. Um, the future, hopefully, you know, holds prosperous success. Um, uh, but I guess the, the thing that unites all our work and all our thinking is, is kind of summed up cleverly by this guy, um, this idea of you know, the importance of who makes the work, um, for whom, and trying to rethink that process. Thank you.